Hello and welcome everyone to today's Association for Manufacturing Excellence webinar series titled The Five Principles of Lean, a four-part introduction to lean thinking. Today's second webinar in the series is titled Make the Process Flow. I am Jerry Strohmeyer, the Education and Training Program Coordinator for AME, and I will be your moderator. Today's presenter is Richard Evans, the President of JR Lean, Vice President of Programs East for AME Canada, Chair of the Lean Certification Oversight and Appeals Committee, and a training within industry certified JR and JR JI instructor. Richard has spent the past four decades helping companies become more effective in delivering quality and value to the production process while focusing on customer success. Having a manufacturing engineering background, Richard helps organizations to recognize waste through mentoring, coaching, and applying lean principles, tools, and techniques. His extended knowledge of various industries, including automotive, aerospace, railroad, packaging, food processing, printing, and fasteners, have enabled him to quickly focus in on opportunities for improvement. During the past 10 years, he has assisted companies in developing lean transformations and has facilitated over 50 Kaizen events. Before we start, just a couple of housekeeping items. You will be in listen-only mode throughout the webinar. You will see that you are muted on your attendee panel on the right side of your screen. If you have questions during the webinar, please type them into the question area in the attendee panel and click on Submit. We'll review the questions at the end of today's presentation and answer as many as we can. When you log off today, please check your email inbox and it will be an invitation and link to fill out a short webinar attendee survey. Please take a few minutes to complete the survey today as your feedback is very important to us to improve future webinars. Richard has also graciously agreed to provide a PDF of today's presentation. We will be sending that along with a recorded link for a webinar replay to each of you next week. Now I am pleased to introduce Richard Evans who will present Make the Process Flow. Take it away, Richard. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good morning to all my colleagues uh, who are at the west of me. I'm actually uh, located near Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm in the eastern time zone right now. So it is 1 p.m. eastern. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, you're listening to and watching uh, a series of webinars based on the five principles of lean. Uh, these principles were first brought to us uh, by um, Jim Wellmack and, and uh, Dan Jones through the book Lean Thinking. And as a reminder, uh, the five principles are value for your customer, identify uh, the value stream, make the process flow, uh, let the customer pull, and head towards perfection. So we've got actually a four-part series. This is part two uh, under Make the Process Flow. And we're going to introduce you today uh, to 5S. This will be a refresher for some of you. Um, it will be maybe new to some of you as well, but hopefully you'll get some real value out of it. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, take a moment just to uh, write them into the question box on the right hand side of your screen and uh, I'll do my best to answer them at the end of the webinar. We, we should be finished uh, on or around uh, 2.30 Eastern Time. So uh, sit back, relax and enjoy. So what is workplace organization? <laughs> As you can see from this image, uh, obviously this lady, uh, we would say that she's not really organized. Uh, and I'm sure uh, that this particular image has been made up specifically um, to, to show uh, a certain condition. Um, although I've actually seen a few city planners offices in, uh, in the GTA area and maybe a little bit further out in Ontario that look similar to this and I've got photographs of them. So we're, we're going to talk about workplace organization because uh, if you're not organized in your workplace then a number of conditions could arise. Uh, you could have safety 
issues that are there. Um, the, obviously, uh, safety is paramount in, in any organization. Um, so that's the first thing we want to try and resolve. Uh, but secondly, you're also going to have time constraints. You're going to, if you can't find uh, anything very, very quickly, then you're going to waste your time. Uh, you remember from session one that we went through the seven deadly wastes, and we remember the seven deadly wastes through uh, Tim Wood, uh, transportation, uh, unnecessary inventory, motion that doesn't add value, uh, waiting, uh, overproduction, producing more or sooner than what the customer needs, uh, overprocessing, using the wrong set of systems, tools, or procedures, and defects. So we have the, the seven deadly wastes. And obviously, the waste of time uh, is, is critical in our organizations. We want to try and eliminate or minimize any wasted time if we can. And if your workplace is not organized, then certainly you're going to incur a lot of wasted time during the working day. And uh, the program called 5S that you're going to learn about today will do a great deal to minimize uh, wasted time and improve the safety within your workplace. So it's a methodology for organizing, uh, cleaning, developing and sustaining a productive and safe working environment. So we focus on three things for the customer, don't we? We focus on on-time delivery, which is the first thing a customer sees. We focus on quality. Everything should be 100% right. Uh, and then we focus on cost. Uh, in your organization, if you uh, look at safety as being your number one prime focus in your business, uh, that's good. Your number two prime focus has to be quality because that's what your customer demands, 100% right. Uh, your number three focus has to be flow. The value that you drive through your business has to flow much, much faster than uh, your competitors so that you can drive down the cost, which is the fourth thing that is important within your organization. We talk about a productive and safe environment. So in order to be productive and get your value flowing, you, you need to be organized. Um, in order to focus on safety, you need to be organized. And the five S's are really what we call the five pillars uh, of the vi visual workplace. And our mantra for 5S is a place for everything, and I should have underlined everything, a place for everything and everything in its place clean and ready for use. So think back over the last uh, period, maybe week or two weeks, and was there any time when you were searching for something? when uh, you thought you knew where it was, but it, it wasn't there. Um, it wasn't there because the home that it should have been in was probably an informal place. Uh, it was just, you know, a couple of people left it here the last time, so that's why we keep it there now. Um, if it's missing, nobody would realize that it's missing because it, it doesn't have a formal home. It has an informal home. So think of the instances over the last couple of weeks where you might have uh, been looking for a certain thing to do your job, whether you're in the office and it might be a stapler, uh, whether you're looking for your safety glasses in order to go on the floor, uh, whether you're working on the machine and you need that special 3 8 open-ended wrench and you've spent 15 minutes looking for it to do a value-added task that takes you about five seconds. All that time is waste, and workplace organization 
through 5S can help you minimize that waste. So here's some examples. Um, the image on the left, actually, they look quite clean, uh, but very much unorganized. Uh, the image on the right now, you can see the first thing, you can actually see your visual communication board um, on the back wall. Uh, you can actually have room now to get in and do some uh, value-added work. Uh, so the work area now is much more usable and even the gray cabinet that you can see in the distance on the right-hand picture, uh, that's got a label at the top so you can understand what's in there. Uh, you may want to even go a little bit further and possibly put a picture of the contents on the outside of that cabinet or uh, even further take the doors off because uh, uh, a lot of companies uh, still believe that if you've got to lock everything up otherwise it uh, gains legs and it walks um, and that's probably because of the culture that you have within your organization that everything that the people need to do their job should be readily accessible and very, very easy and quickly to find. Here's another example. Uh, in On the left-hand side, we've got a lot of unnecessary items uh, that are just stored on the floor. And on the right-hand side, they've performed one of the S's, uh, maybe two of the S's, uh, possibly three of the S's. And they're much more organized. And you've actually got um, a a more safer passage to get through to the next part of the business. So what is 5S not? It's not a cleanup campaign. Uh, I've seen a lot of companies that actually uh, do spring cleaning and, and they believe they're doing 5S, uh, but they're not really. Uh, I've heard of a lot of companies as well that I would mm, probably uh, quite humor, humorly, humorously uh, say they're five, expert, five S experts. And uh, they go, really? Oh, why is that? And I say, because you've done it nine times. Um, you've not done it once and you've not uh, persevered at it. You've not kept going. Uh, so you'll understand that when we learn what the five S's are. Does your work area, uh, does your factory, uh, does your garage at home, does your shed at home look a little bit like this? If you look at the image, um, there's a lot of things in there that, wow, is wrong. And uh, my next door neighbor's garage looks a little bit like this, but he's a great guy and, uh, and I tease him quite often and uh, give him a test. Uh, Go find me this, Reg, <laughs> and, uh, and it takes him quite a while. But um, some of the key features of what we call a shed type enterprise is that tools, jigs, manuals, uh, machines even remain on site, even though they haven't been used for a long time. Um, your employees, the people who add your value, they keep private stores of equipment and materials. Why do they do that? because they're f afraid, they don't want to waste any time going and, and getting it, and it might not even be in stock. So they keep it themselves, and uh, they keep it to themselves. So if you multiply that by 50 or 60 people, there's a lot of equipment and materials that the business may not know exists. Uh, the third element or feature of a shed-type enterprise is that you spend a lot and, and I repeat, a lot of time looking for stuff. A lot of time looking for stuff. Um, somebody in your organization might have a daily, daily task of um, taking work orders out to the first operation uh, in, in a process. So it might be um, slitting or sawing uh, bar stock, something like that and they leave them on the desk. There's not a home for them, and 
for whatever reason, you know, one falls down at the side and it gets into a bin, and then that work order is then lost. And there's a huge amount of time wasted. So being organized will certainly minimize the amount of time that you spend looking for things. So how do we get there? We want to really be a, uh, what we call a supermarket type enterprise. And you know, you, you've been to the supermarket, um, you see that in the supermarket everything uh, is easily accessible, uh, everything is labeled, uh, the aisles usually have signs that tell you what is down the aisle, obviously they don't tell you everything uh, because you have multiple things down there, but they usually tell you what type of product is down the aisle. So if you're looking for something, you would start by walking along the ends of the aisle and looking up at the signage. And then once you see the one that matches the product that you're looking for, then you would walk down that aisle and visually find it. And some of the key features in a supermarket enterprise, uh, only needed equipment and tools are in the facility. Uh, anything that is not necessary or past its sell-by date is disposed of. Uh, you would see open storage of tools, jigs, parts, uh, and they would be identified by either numbering or color coding systems. And I'll emphasize again the word open storage. Uh, in that first image, we saw the, the gray cabinet that was closed. Uh, my preference would be, let's open it. Um, if you close cabinet doors, uh, it could hide a multitude of sins, and people may not bother keeping it visually organized if there's a door on it. So open storage is really important. But the key uh, to having a, a great supermarket type enterprise is that any tool or document can be found within 30 seconds by anyone. So if you brought uh, a person off the street into your plant and you put them in a certain area, you could say, uh, okay, go find me the torque wrench, uh, the three foot long torque wrench and start the clock and within 30 seconds, without that person ever knowing anything at all, that person should be able to find the three foot long torque wrench within 30 seconds. So from the shed to the supermarket, uh, you apply the five S's. So what are the five S's? Okay, so here are the five S's. Uh, we, we start off with sort. Uh, then we go to simplify, and uh, a number of organizations use different uh, terminology for simplify. They could say set in order or straighten. So simplify, set in order, or straighten are all the same. Um, the third S is always shine. The fourth S is standardize. And the fifth S is sustain. So uh, we're going to see later on in the webinar how to do each of these particular S's. And we'll give you some tips on ha having a successful 5S program. But what I'd like to do first is to uh, take you through a little exercise so all of the uh, people who are watching all of the attendees, I want you to follow very closely the next couple of slides because you're going to be given uh, an audience response poll uh, at certain stages through this game. And I need you to uh, obviously um, be honest with your answers. And if there's a number of you that are sitting around the, uh, the conference room table or the boardroom table watching the webinar, um, whoever's got the lowest number uh, for each particular stage, then that's the number that you would input into the, the poll answer. 
So let me explain what the 5S numbers game is all about. So I'm going to show you a sheet uh, next up. And the sheet represents our workplace. Okay, uh, The sheet is going to have a whole bunch of numbers on it. And our job during a 20 second shift is to find the numbers 1 to 49 in the correct sequence. In other words, you've got to find number 1 first. And then once you found number 1, you look for number 2. And then when you found number 2, you look for number 3. Okay, so our team, uh, our team score is going to be represented by the lowest individual score that's achieved. Okay, so everybody ready? I'm going to bring up uh, the next sheet and you'll have 20 seconds in order to uh, find the numbers 1 to 49. Here we go. Okay, the 20 seconds starts now and you've got to find the numbers 1 to 49 in the correct sequence. Okay, so four, three, two, one, there we go. All right, so um, here's your audience response question. And in a couple of seconds, uh, Jerry will bring up the screen to allow you to enter some information. So here's what I'm asking. How many numbers did you find in the correct order? Uh, zero to five, six to 10, 11 to 19, 20 to 30, 31 to 49. So Jerry, can you bring up the first poll, please? I'm going to give you uh, uh, maybe 10 seconds. Well, we'll give you 20 seconds uh, to answer this one. OK, so everybody enter your um, responses. And, and then when we've given 20 seconds to everyone, then we'll see what the results are, see what the percentage is. OK, Jerry, so 20 seconds is up. Can you bring the results up, please? Sure. And the results are, for 0 to 5, we were at 93%. And from 6 to 10, we were at 7%. 7%, OK. So 0 to 5, that's what we're going to use, right? Um, so in this particular workplace, uh, we found either zero or, or five or less than five uh, in this particular work area. So what would we do? Okay, we've obviously got a very cluttered area. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply our first S. And our first S is sort. And the emphasis on sort is to separate the necessary from the unnecessary and remove the unnecessary from the work area. So in this particular step, we've done our sort and we're going to remove the unnecessary numbers. So the unnecessary numbers are from 50 to 90, which were cluttering up the place. And when we've done that, uh, we're going to run the same little test. The same rule applies. Uh, when I bring the sheet up, I want you to find numbers 1 to 49 in sequence during this 20 second shift. So go again, uh, look for 1, look for 2, etc. All right, so here we go, and I'm going to start the clock as soon as you see. Right, so 20 seconds is starting now, and you need to find the numbers 1 two, three, all the way up to 49. So when the 20 second shift finishes, let me know what your score is. So 20 seconds is up. OK, so how many numbers did you find in the correct order? Can you bring the poll question up, please, Jerry? Sure. OK. So we'll give you maybe 15, 20 seconds again just to um, 
just to gather your information and make sure we've got everybody's response. Just a few more seconds. Okay, Jerry, close the poll and then uh, let's have a look at what the results were. Can you show them on the screen, the results? Um, I can read them. So, okay, that's uh, fine. Yep. Zero to five is 36 percent. 6 to 10 is 57 percent, and 11 to 19 is 7 percent. Okay, so we still have 36 percent that still could not find the, the right numbers in the right order, okay? Um, and they only got from 0 to 5 or less than 5. Um, if your work area is not organized, um, so that anyone, and, and I repeat, anyone can find anything um, very, very quickly, then you've got an opportunity to improve. So let's have a look what we would do now if we were going to improve our workplace. So having achieved some improvement, we're going to move on to simplify. So we've actually installed some racking now, and we've organized the items uh, so that number one is in the bottom left-hand corner. You might see it down there. Number one is in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, number two is right above it. And number three uh, is in the one above that. And then number four would be the next one at the bottom and keep going. So the same rule is going to apply and I'm going to start the 20 seconds now. Okay, so 20 seconds. Find the numbers 1 to 49, uh, given the ordering or the organization code that we've given you. Okay, so 20 seconds is up. Uh, Jerry, could you bring up the uh, audience response poll, please. And when that's up, we'll give you 20 seconds now to fill in. And let's see if we've actually improved, if we've got uh, a lot higher numbers. I wonder if anybody actually got all the way to 49. I wonder if anyone got all the way to 49. Okay, 20 seconds is up. Jerry, what were the results? There's the results. So okay. we have, um, yeah, 21 percent, uh, 11 to 19, uh, 71 percent, 20 to 30, and 7 percent had 31 to 49. Okay, so we are improving. So our 5S program is actually uh, helping us to locate things quicker than uh, what we would do if it was unorganized. So what do we do next? So uh, we've, we've now made a big step forward, as we can see with the responses. Um, we're going to ignore Shine for this exercise, uh, but we'll deal with Shine later as we go through the webinar. But it really seems that if we're dealing with the numbers 1 to 49 in sequence, um, it's logical that we want to reorganize them in a standard way. So that makes the completion of the work task as easy as possible. So for example, if, um, if you are um, putting a pre-kit together to assemble something, uh, you might say, OK, I've got all the kit in this box. So you, you don't need to go to the stores. You don't need to look for anything. Now, as soon as the person doing the assembly task is um, receives the kit, the first thing he do he does it might be to take all the parts out and lay them in the order that he's going to assemble them in. So now you've got the the work that's being carried out by the value adder, and by him reorganizing that kit even though everything is there for him, it, uh, it's a wasted time for him. So if the person providing him with the kit was to give it to him in uh, the way that he's going to assemble, 
then it would make his task a lot, lot easier. And a reminder that there's only two types of people that work in an organization. There's the people who add the value to the product or service that you sell that puts money in your pocket. And then there's the people who support the people that add value to the product or service that you sell that puts money in your pocket. So the sole responsibility of the support people is to make the life of the value adders as easy as you can. So in this next particular sheet I'm going to show you, we've reorganized everything. And again, I'm going to give you uh, 20 seconds to locate the numbers 1 through 49 in the correct sequence. And I don't think anybody needs any more than six seconds, five seconds, four seconds, three seconds to know that you can do it. So uh, let's bring up the poll questions, please. How many numbers did you find in the correct order? And let's see what the response is. We'll just give you uh, a few more seconds just to get all your numbers in. And then we'll see what the response is. Hopefully. Uh, we're going to get 100%. Okay, Jerry, let's see what the results are. 100%. Awesome. Excellent. So you can see the difference from the very first uh, condition of our workplace to after we've organized it and uh, converted it to a visual landscape. But we haven't finished yet. So. Um, to show respect for standards, we want to make the management of the area very visual. Okay? We're going to make it very visual. So returning to our original work area, we have for this assignment two numbers that are missing. We can't complete our task without these numbers, so we have to find them. So I'm going to leave the screen up for one minute this time. Uh, which represents three shifts. And I want you to find the two missing numbers. Right, so we're going to leave it up for one whole minute. Okay. See if you can find the two missing numbers. quite hard, isn't it? Because you have to find one, then two, then three, four down the bottom, five in the middle, six up the top, seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh. It's very confusing. And you'll be amazed how long one minute actually is. And when we say, oh, it only takes us a minute to retrieve it, that's a long time when you can actually retrieve something in two or three seconds if it's in the right place. So there's our minute. Our minute is up. Okay, so let's bring the response poll up, please, Jerry. Did you find the missing numbers before the three shifts ended? Uh, click yes or no. And uh, all I need is maybe five, four. Three, two, one. Okay, let's look at the results, Jerry. Ah, did we get anybody with anything, or, or were they all no? Oh, we have 13% that are yes, and 87% are no. Okay, it's interesting. 13% 13 13. say yes. yes. They found the yes. missing numbers. Ah, yes. interesting. That's great. Yeah, we, we have obviously some very keen eyes out there. Um, that 13% that actually put the missing numbers in, can you just uh, maybe put them in the, the question box and send them to Jerry uh, so that she's got a record? Uh, and then I'm going to show you the missing numbers 
uh, in a minute. Okay, I'm going to show you the missing numbers in a minute, but put them into the uh, maybe the the next thing. So the missing numbers are actually 18 and 35. Now it's much easier for t us to see that when the place is a visual landscape. Uh, the very first one, we had a minute, and that minute's a huge amount of time. But in this particular screen, we actually had a uh, maybe two seconds, and we could see straight away what was missing. So that was the 5S numbers game. It's a very simple game uh, that you can actually uh, go on the web, and you can pull it down. Um, there's even, I believe, a free one um, from uh, a, a web um, shop called 5S Supply that's by a good friend of mine, uh, Tony Manus, and it's all in color, and it, it's really cool. It, um, you can use that and, and help people within your organization understand 5S. So go pull it off the web. Um, the 5S numbers game, and then you can download it and use it at your leisure. Uh, did anybody write what the numbers were, Jerry? By the way, did you get any responses? Yes, in the we did get a response, and they yep. had 18 and 35. They had so 18 thank and you 35. For participating. Yes. Excellent. Well done. Well done. Whoever that was, very keen eyes. Um, but it was only 13%. So, unfortunately, not everyone. Uh, could see what you guys or girls could see. So we're going to look through each of the S's now uh, in detail and let you know how to uh, perform each of the S's and we'll show you some of the benefits. So the first S is to sort, know it, promote it, practice it. So the, the basic uh, premise from sort is separating necessary from unnecessary. So the first thing you need to do is to decide uh, which items are necessary to do your job and then remove anything else from the workplace that are unnecessary for either the current production or any admin type work. So that's the key to separate necessary from unnecessary. Why is it important? So it, it's really important uh, because a lot of the uh, problems um, and the issues that appear uh, when our work flows through the area, they're reduced um, if you do this really well. Uh, the communication is improved, uh, and also you get a, a real safer working environment. So certainly uh, it's um, paramount that you get rid of all the stuff that you don't need in order to make things better. So how do you do it? Well, three basic questions that you need to ask. Uh, you pick the item up. Is it necessary? Uh, yes. If it is necessary, do we need this many? And if it is necessary, does it need to be located here? Or could we remove it maybe within a foot? of where it's going to be used instead of 10 feet away. So three simple questions to ask. How do we perform the, the sort process? Well, we do a simple method called red tagging. And we red tag any items that are potentially unnecessary um, because we want to go through a process of evaluating their usefulness within the business and, and then deal with them appropriately afterwards. Once you've red tagged something, you then take that particular item and move it to a red tag holding area. Now, a lot of companies uh, have multiple holding areas around their organization. They have what are called local red tag holding areas that are local to the work areas or work cells that is being red tagged. And you will uh, then go and temporarily put your unnecessary items in this local area. Uh, once you've done that, um, after a certain period of time, you would then move those items to call what we call a central 
holding area um, so that uh, I'm going to go back to this one so that uh, if that item that you deem is unnecessary in your area uh, another department or another area in the business might actually need it in order to complete their tasks so that way you can then uh, move the particular item into the area where it's needed uh, we hold it for a certain time because uh, people have a tendency to hang on to stuff um, and I hear time after time after time again oh this 5S program is no good uh, and I ask the question why oh we did a sort and that fixture that we hadn't used for 20 years guess what we need it next week <laughs> and you know this is one time out of maybe 10,000 that it occurs so is it going to be 100% effective no and you will get the occasions where you move something out the area and you dispose of it and then sure enough uh, six weeks ten weeks six months later people are going to say I needed it I told you not to get rid of it um, the consequence is that you've got to go and get a new one made but the amount of time that people have lost in either storing it or labeling it or anything else far outweighs the cost of making something new and it was probably old and useless anyway but people still felt comfortable with it so your criteria number one check for usefulness um, if the item isn't necessary it should be disposed of then you check for frequency if it is but it's not used very often you can store it somewhere away and if it is necessary but you don't need this many then you can uh, put the excess um, either in a central storage area or you can um, sell them if you don't need that many so there's your criteria for red tagging and we just have a very simple standardized card for red tagging and we would then put the date the originator of the department and then assign a number to each of the tags you would keep a red tag log obviously when you assign a number and you identify uh, each one with a, a little bit of a description how to do it uh, you can see these two ladies they're performing a red tag in an office area uh, the best way to do it is to tackle the whole area quickly um, we say in one day um, you might want to do it in an hour if it's not too big an area make it very short and powerful and don't question uh, don't evaluate anything when you understand that there's the possibility that you won't need it don't evaluate it at this time you then go and um, obviously move the items to your holding areas and as I mentioned you will probably have a local holding area uh, which is temporary for your local area and then a central area to keep uh, all the items that have come from all of the local areas so then you can uh, evaluate what to do with them in the end so once you've identified the items uh, they may be held for a period of time um, to see whether people realize that they want them back they may be disposed of, they may be relocated, or they may be left exactly where they are. Um, and these are the, uh, this is after you've done the red tag. So uh, in a lot of cases, when you red tag, you'll find a lot of garbage, a lot of scrap stuff. And don't bother red tagging it, just throw it away. Uh, get a big skip or something and just throw the stuff in the skip. Um, only red tag the items that you believe have value for them so this is a red tag process I like using visuals because uh, people's eyes tend to gravitate towards the visuals um, if you just have text uh, people don't bother reading it um, what is it they say what I see I forget um, what I hear 
Uh, what I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. Uh, what I do, I understand. So in this particular case, you're actually looking at the person doing something. And again, it's uh, step by step. Fill up the red tag, attach it, take the item and place it in the local area. Uh, have you realized it's necessary? Yes, retrieve it, make good use of it. No, uh, after 30 days, hold a use or lose auction and agree on disposal. So in summary, on sort, uh, you, your three basic questions to ask. Is it necessary? If it is, do I need this many? Uh, if it is, does it need to be uh, stored here? On red tagging, uh, you've got the two holding areas, local and central. Uh, you've got the criteria, usefulness, frequency, and quantity. And then obviously make it short and powerful and then um, the area types, as I mentioned, is local and central. Uh, separate the necessary from the unnecessary. That is the key for sort. So if you have any questions on sort, just uh, put them down and send them to Jerry, and she'll ask them at the end. So sort is the first S. Um, here's the poll question that we've got. Uh, frequency of use. Frequency of use is used with which S? Is it used with shine, sorting, simplifying, or standardize? Frequency of use, is it used with shine, sort, simplify, or standardize? OK, Jerry, can you bring the poll question up? And we'll give them 20 seconds to answer that one. It may or may not be the S that I've just um, talked about. OK, let's close the poll. The, uh, the answer, the correct answer is, OK, uh, what did we get? Uh, we have sort at 100%. OK, well, the actual correct answer, if you close it, is simplify. Because um, when you're sorting, you are separating necessary from unnecessary. When you're simplifying, you're arranging things according to frequency of use. So a little bit of a trick question. So caught all of you unawares on that one. <laughs> Um, and I'm not sure, I don't think you were sleeping. I think you were just, uh, you just assumed that frequency of use was going to be um, about the one that I just talked about. But that's okay. So we learned from uh, obviously our experiences. So we're going to talk about Simplify now. Uh, know it, promote it, practice it. Simplifying means arranging necessary items so they're readily available and labeled and then anyone can locate them and put them away. So if you look at this image, uh, if you wanted to go and retrieve something, uh, it's pretty clear that anyone could go and find it. So they could see what they needed. So how do you implement Simplify? So the focus is to locate items according to their frequency of use. Frequency of use. How often do I use this? Uh, I use it every 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Then you want to put it within arm's length. I use this once a month. So it's OK for me to walk 10 or 15 feet to get it if it's only once a month. So store infrequently used items away from the place of use. And store items together if they're used together. Store them in the sequence in which they are used. So this is actually a very simple uh, methodology to implement Simplify. So three principles of deciding where to put things. Okay. So get rid of waste by uh, keeping your jigs, tools, and dies 
um, locally or at point of use. We use the term point of use. Uh, if we think about um, Henry Ford, if we think about how lean was uh, brought about maybe during the Second World War by building the B-17 bomber. Uh, the materials for the day's shift were pre-staged and located at point of use. So the uh, ladies and, and men who were building the aircraft uh, could actually get them um, very, very quickly and then put them onto the aircraft very, very quickly. So by doing that, you get rid of unnecessary motion, and you improve your motion that doesn't add, add value. So you're improving the motion that doesn't add any value. The third principle um, is very radical. So you might actually decide to get rid of a whole operation. Um, something that you were doing uh, that when you look at how your value flows through your business, you can decide, well, we don't need to do that now because we've actually uh, staged the parts very, very close to us. We don't need this interim stage of going and collecting them and coming back. So that whole operation uh, could be eliminated. So how do we do it? Well, there's, there's a number of ways that you can do it. Um, Plant layout is a good way, uh, looking at how things flow, uh, looking at what people have to do in order to perform their task. So we talk about uh, going to Gemba and uh, locating um, the work that we're going to view, and then just watch the sequence of things. And then you can decide to make a floor plan that shows the uh, location of all the parts and inventory and anything else you've got currently. Uh, you would look at material travel. You might draw arrows on the plan showing the workflow uh, and then you number them in the order that you perform them. So once you've looked carefully at the resulting diagram, it might look like a bowl of spaghetti and you're going to see congestion. Um, and then, according to the three principles earlier, you can see ways to eliminate the waste. So you would make a new 5S map, and like every change that we do, it's purely an experiment. We're going to try it, we're going to see if it works, and we follow PDCA, which is Plan, Do, Check, Act, and if the results are not as we foresaw, foreseen, then we would do an adjust instead of the act and run the experiment again. So you continue to experiment with the, the maps until you find one that you think works really well. So uh, then what you do is implement it and put all the, the new items or the necessary items in their new locations and then continue to evaluate. And that's what PDCA is all about. It's continuous improvement. So when you adjust, you go back to plan and you start all over again. And that's what uh, uh, continuous improvement is all about. Once you've identified the right locations, um, you need to make them visual. You've got to have it so that people can very quickly see where things go and how many of each item are needed there. So this looks uh, a really good organized area. You can see everything is visual, and as long as people know what the color code means, then they can find things very quickly within 30 seconds. Um, use visual controls uh, in many areas. You can see some examples there uh, to save time. And again, uh, this is um, organizing your workplace. So if you've got a situation where you want to do a changeover, and on this particular machine, you need to maybe rotate a fixture 
to bring another fixture that's located underneath, uh, you might want to put uh, on your wheel uh, the direction of travel uh, in a label that prevents people from winding things the wrong way and coming against a dead stop and then going back the right way. So make it visual so the least amount of questions are asked. And finally, on this one, at a glance, anyone should be able to tell the difference between normal and abnormal. And uh, as you can see from that gauge, the normal is in the green. Um, there was not a color code on that gauge before, and people didn't know whether the needle was actually right unless they knew the job. So some really good ideas there. And as you can see uh, on the chain guard, they've actually removed the, the actual uh, solid block and put some uh, maybe clear um, perspex in there so that you can see the normal condition. Uh, really, really good. So use visual controls to help you out. Um, who uses it? Well, obviously, everyone uses it. See this sign? If you hit this sign, you will hit that bridge. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that one. Yeah, so really good use of visual controls. Signboards, what, where, how many, uh, location indicators, item indicators, and amount indicators uh, show many how many of these belong there. Uh, there's a company up in Canada that uh, actually has uh, a series of racking that they store their packing materials on for uh, packing their products and shipping them out. And they've gone the extra mile with their visual indicators so that it shows like a water level of how many parts are needed, uh, the maximum and the minimum. And what they've done uh, is actually uh, put eight webcams looking at the eight areas and the supplier of these items checks their web every day and checks the webcam and if the uh, level of inventory has hit the minimum level then that triggers the supplier to bring in um, enough to go up to the maximum level again. No purchase order uh, no uh, shipping advice, no invoicing other than one general invoice a month. Uh, the amount of waste that they've eliminated, unbelievable. So think about that. That might help you going forward. Uh, there's no need to match invoices and purchase orders to the pennies. It's just a total waste. Lots of visual controls that you can use. Uh, Kanbans, uh, if you didn't know what Kanban is, it's a visual signal, a visual signal to uh, to either withdraw or make something. And we'll be talking about Kanbans in a later webinar. Uh, tags, performance displays, defective displays, um, identification, location, quantity markers, etc. These are all part of the visual landscape, and they're all to help you organize your workplace. So the least amount of questions need be asked. Paint the areas, uh, div create divider lines. So you want to identify locations on floors and walkways. Uh, you want to define a place for everything, maybe door ranges, uh, any storage for carts or trash containers, um, any tiger marked areas for clearance if you want to keep um, the area in front of an electrical panel free. Uh, by law, you have to do that. Uh, start off with uh, some floor tape just to prove that where you've decided the item is going is the right one. Then once you've proven it after a few weeks, then replace it with paint. And that way, the trucks going over it won't remove it all the while. Use a lot of color coding. Uh, coloring uh, is great, uh, with the exception of people who are colorblind. Uh, but then you can use uh, numbering systems as well. And a lot of uh, colors, along with 
numbers help identify um, everything. Make sure that parts with the same color are stored in an area may be painted with the same color. So in summary, on um, simplify, uh, it's the elimination of waste. So we locate items according to frequency of use. Uh, we experiment with, with layouts to find the best way to lay out the work areas uh, ergonomically so we uh, can reduce motion. And then we identify the areas where things go. So there should be no uh, question whatsoever of what goes here. And if people borrow them, uh, put in a process that they identify who's got it. And that way, when somebody comes along and they need it, they're not asking who's took this. So put a process in place that says, OK, Richard's got this particular item uh, since 9 AM this morning. Use a lot of visual controls so that people can tell the difference between normal and abnormal. So that's the second S, that's simplify. Uh, we've got about 30 minutes left on the webinar. Uh, we're going to look at our uh, 5S, next 5S, which is the third S, which is shine right now. So remember, we missed that when we did the the actual um, numbers game, we missed out Shine. So we're going to have a look now. So Shine is all about a visual and physical sweep. So make sure you look at your area and perform thorough cleaning or maintenance on an ongoing basis. Keep everything swept and clean. Um, obviously, no more spring cleaning because it becomes part of our daily routine. And make sure that items are clean and ready for use. This is vitally important uh, if you're working uh, on a certain job and you go and find something that the previous shift had used and it's really not in a condition. You've got to spend time cleaning it, plus the relationship between the shifts deteriorates. So it's everyone's responsibility that when they finished using something, they make it clean and ready for use for the next person. Some of the symptoms or problems of an unclean workplace, uh, dirty windows, interesting. Uh, defects um, are less noticeable when there's a whole lot of mess about. Uh, you might have an oil leak but you don't know if that oil leak was from six months ago or it happened overnight. Uh, a lot of poor preventive maintenance leads to uh, breakdowns and late deliveries. And then you might get uh, chips, shavings, cutting swarf mixed with production materials. Uh, you can't read your computer screens. So this obviously tells you that you've got a, a really dirty, messy, unsafe working environment. Not a nice place to work in. So how do we do it? Well, the first thing we do is define cleanliness targets. Equipment, uh, any machines, parts and materials, uh, maybe warehouse items, uh, whip or finished goods. So identify your targets to start with. Uh, it could be space, uh, floors, work areas, walkways, uh, on top of desks, on top of lockers. OK, and identify those areas. You can see here it's pretty filthy, and somebody's probably thinking they're going to play hopscotch. I'm not sure, but not a very nice place to work in. Assign tasks. So uh, this is a 5S zone, shine it. Um, everyone's responsibility uh, is to clean and keep things clean. So how do you do it? You create a 5S map of your area. So you might have, you might designate um, the complete facility into zones and then divide zones into particular cells for 5S. That's your 5S map. 
assign ownership and responsibility of each cell, and then take that um, cell and divide it by grid, and then have the cell people assign responsibilities by the grid, and then you cover everything. Once you've done that, you create a 5S schedule. So that will identify who's responsible uh, by area, day and time of day to maintain it. And then we look at different cleaning methods. So include inspection before, during, at the end of the day or shift. Uh, make sure that your leaders give you times for the activities. Uh, I've heard that there's things like a daily three-minute three minute 5S activity. So you can identify that we're going to give you three minutes. Um, remember how long a minute took when you were looking for those missing numbers. And uh, essentially, uh, three of those minutes is a long time. So prepare um, your schedule for things that you do on a daily basis, uh, for things that you might do once a week or once a month or twice a year. Um, for things like, um, you know, going up on the roof and making sure it's clean, clean of any debris that might have blown, you know, during the, the fall or the winter. So make it a natural part of your work day. You're not going to miss any square inch of the organization. So cleanliness methods, uh, you've got to decide targets and tools. What will I need? to uh, clean each area, so what supplies and equipment will be required. Um, I said three minute, here's a five minute cleanliness, it's a lot of time. Uh, specific task allotted for cleanliness, and then you've got to create your standards for your procedures. People need to know what their responsibilities are, uh, and they can follow the procedure so they know what to do. So in summary, no more spring cleaning, uh, part of a daily routine, and we have everything clean and ready for use, and it's everyone's responsibility for a visual and physical sweep. So now we have uh, three S's, uh, sort, simplify, shine, and the fourth S is standardize. Again, know it, promote it, practice it. So what is it all about? Well, this is uh, a lot of companies get a little bit confused about standardized. Uh, they think it's creating standard work to do their job. So we're going to standardize on the way we make this product. In fact, standardize in 5S is pretty simple. You have to maintain the first three S's. So you're standardizing on the way you maintain the first three S's. So if the first three S's, sort, simplify, and shine, are maintained properly, then you're going to have some good results. So what would you do? Let's have a look. OK. Um, if you look at sort, for instance, how would you standardize on sorting? Uh, you may decide that you're going to put a red tag schedule in every month because I'm sure that unnecessary items will creep back into your area. So if you now standardize on your red tag process, then you're going to maintain uh, sorting. How are you going to maintain simplify? Well, you may decide that you're going to um, put in some standards for color coding. And you're going to um, make some standards for your signage. You're going to make some standards for shadow boards. So now you're standardizing on how you're going to uh, do Simplify. And you would do the same for Shine. You'd put standard methodology in place 
that everybody uses. So, number one, decide who's responsible for activities with regard to maintaining the first three S conditions. Number two, integrate maintenance into regular working activities to prevent setbacks. And then number three, uh, follow up and monitor how well the first three S conditions are being maintained. So we're going to make sort, simplify, and shine a regular habit. So when maintaining the first three S's, everyone must know what they're responsible for. So this could be the cell owners or the zone owners that you've developed uh, and identified when you've done your 5S maps. Um, instructions must be given to people who deliver goods from the outside as well. So when they come into your organization, again, they should not have to ask too many questions. One of the companies that I worked at a few years ago in the shipping area, uh, there was regular um, pickups by the couriers, so FedEx, um, Purolator, UPS, and then a private trucking company. What the shipping guys did was to have uh, three or four little posts that were movable, and anything that was going to be picked up by FedEx, they would put in a certain area, and they'd put the post there, FedEx pickups. So the FedEx guy would come straight away, and he'd know exactly what he's got to collect that day. And the same for Purolator, the same for UPS. So 5S is very powerful, and people have some wonderful ways of uh, approaching it. Visual 5S makes non-standard conditions appear obvious. So you should be able to distinguish between standard and non-standard. If you look at the left-hand side, you've got a beautiful shadow box, but what's it for? And now you know, because you put a label. It's a pick and place card. It's very clear. So integrate 5S activities and maintenance into everyone's regular working day, and then you sustain the conditions, uh, and it should be part of your normal routine. So what are the four activities? Review the sorting, review simplifying, review shine, and establish a responsible schedule. So standardize is maintaining the first three S's. So think of all the things that you, you need to do to maintain sort, to maintain simplify, and to maintain shine. Make sure everyone knows what they're assigned to and what their responsibilities are and standardize on your locations of everything that you've got a home for. Make sure that when people retrieve things and return them, that you've got a process that controls that as well. So, the 5S methodology is implemented to A, improve housekeeping, B, ensure people know where to find things, C, promote a clean environment for visitors, or D, develop and sustain a productive and safe environment. Could you bring up the poll question, please, Jerry? And we'll give you sure. 20 seconds to answer it. Is it A, is it B, is it C, is it D? 5S methodology, why do we implement it? Okay, Jerry, let's close the poll. Um, the answer is D, develop and sustain a productive and safe environment. And what was the poll responses? What did we get? 100%. 100% correct. Excellent. Well, 
Well done. That means everybody's awake. I'm really pleased. <laughs> okay. So the last S is sustain. Know it, promote it, practice it. It's probably the one that many organizations um, fail at. And usually it's because management lost interest, unfortunately. So let's have a look at what we do. Making a habit of using correct procedures. Performing 5S on an ongoing and systematic basis. How do we sustain it? Well, if you, um, if you don't maintain the first four S's, in other words, if you don't maintain the first three by standardizing, then the process will be a waste of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy. So you have to sustain it. That's why it's, it's very, very important. And then you don't want to become one of these 5S experts who have done it nine times. What are the conditions that we must have for sustaining? Well, like any change management model, your first condition is awareness. So awareness uh, to everybody, the importance, why are we doing it? Uh, then you've got to obviously satisfy the desire of people. If we had a clean and safe workplace, would this be a better place to work in? And the majority, if not everyone, would say absolutely. So now, in order for sustaining, you've got to give people time. You've got to give people time to do this. If you don't implement 5S in your company and you don't do it well, then there's a whole load of time that's being wasted anyway. So if you want to say I take 10% of that wasted time and I'm actually going to allocate it to maintaining 5S, you're going to be way ahead of the game. You need a structure, so you need roles and responsibilities, you need uh, 5S maps, you need checklists, you need standards, you need support from leadership. Leadership obviously have to buy into this and they have to drive it really hard with a passion. That will give you enthusiasm and satisfaction. And then, as well, you need to provide reward and recognition. Uh, I know uh, the same company I worked at, we actually developed uh, 5S dollars, and people were awarded 5S dollars for how good they were and, and what level of 5S scores they were achieving. And they could exchange these 5S dollars for uh, company clothing, um, pens, things like that, or uh, local coffee shop gift certificates, or free night at the movies, or dinner for two at a local restaurant. So these are the conditions for sustaining. You've got to keep the system alive. And as I mentioned right at the beginning, um, 5S fails mostly because management loses interest. So managers are going to drive this. You've got to lead by example. Uh, you've got to put things away. Uh, one of the things I do on a regular basis, if I have a walk in a plant and I see garbage on the floor, I'll stop and pick it up and put it in a trash can. And yet I see the people who are taking me around that plant walk straight past it. And that just tells you that they're not being measured on the right things. Um, we do it because it's going to improve productivity. We do it because it's going to improve safety to a great degree. If we don't measure it, then people are not going to think it's important. So you have to measure it. So everyone is responsible. So what are the rewards that you get? Well, obviously, um, it's a pleasant place to work. It's very, very safe. 
uh, it's it's really good that it takes you less than 30 seconds to find the thing you need to do your job. There's a lot of job satisfaction, uh, improvement, and improved communication. And you go and increase efficiency and product quality. So productivity is going to be increased tremendously. Without sustaining, you're going to go back. Uh, the unnecessary items will start piling up again. Uh, you get people who don't return things. Uh, an unsafe environment would start to appear, and the machines would start to go wrong again. And these are problems that we experience when the 5S program dies. So performing 5S uh, is is rewarding to you. You've got to keep the system alive. You've got to obviously recognize people for sustaining the program and realize what the problems are without sustaining. So you're going to make a habit of using correct procedures and leadership has to measure, they have to audit. So how do you implement 5S? So I mentioned PDCA originally uh, earlier on in the webinar. This is our continuous improvement circle. Uh, if you're not aware of what PDCS is, uh, you can Google it. Uh, you'll go and see it on the web, and it will show you what the continuous improvement circle is. So on P, plan, first thing, select a steering committee. This is vitally important. Um, you've got to have representatives from all areas, but you need a 5S champion, someone who is really passionate. Um, once you've done that, the steering committee will develop an implementation plan. And then, obviously, uh, with that plan, you will look at your whole facility and you will uh, map it out into zones and cells and develop teams for each area, each 5S area. So then establish the rules. Under the do portion, for each area, you've got to provide training. So you've got to show people, um, number one, uh, why it's important, so awareness and desire. Provide the training, which is knowledge. Then uh, go and check them, which is ability, and then reinforce them and measure. So that's the change management model called ADCAR, A-D-K-A-R, and that's what you would do uh, for each area. And then after you've developed the 20-day plan, you will then perform the initial audit, and then you will obviously improve based upon the audit results on the first three S's. For the final two S's, you're now going to standardize, okay, so tidy, orderly, and clean, um, which is sort, simplify, and shine, and then perform the audits to ensure the standards have been implemented and the areas are actually uh, improving or maintaining, or getting better. And then finally, continuous improvement, uh, peer audits, and uh, there's nothing wrong, and I've, I've known lots of companies that are parts of consortiums where uh, each consortium company will receive a group of people from the other consortium members to do a 5S audit within their plant. So don't be afraid to open it up to outside eyes. Mm. So 5S, a picture's worth a thousand words. Um, look at the area where you work right now and compare it maybe with this picture. And uh, some people are going to say, well, that took a lot of money to do that. If you think about the money that you're wasting right now, 
by not having an organized and clean workplace, then that money will be recovered tenfold when you do get there. It's not going to be easy. It is very, very hard. But the outcome is well worth the effort. And safety is number one. Finding anything within 30 seconds is number two. And you will have a wonderful, wonderful place to work. The five S's. So, any questions? <laughs> okay, we've, we've talked um, about making the process flow. This is um, based on the five principles of lean thinking. Uh, it's, it's wonderful when you see companies that have embraced 5S. And uh, I know many, many companies that have. I also know many companies that have started it and failed. Uh, my own organization that I was with for many years uh, was extremely successful with 5S. We were written up in uh, Manufacturing Engineering and Plant Magazine uh, for having a world-class 5S program. Um, I left that organization in 2006. And unfortunately, when I went back six months later, their 5S program had crashed. And a decade later, uh, they're, they're resurrecting it now, and uh, they've got all of the materials that they need in order to make, again, a world-class 5S program. It's all about leadership. It's all about committing to doing it right. It's all about providing support and time uh, and providing people with the awareness uh, of why it's important. So, Jerry, do we have any questions from the audience at all? I uh, yes, we do. Um, and thank you, Richard, for the presentation. And uh, as Richard said, we will review the questions. And if you do have any questions, please submit them on the right side of your screen. And I believe, Richard, is when you were talking about sustaining and support from leadership. The first question is: Is it that management lost interest, or the culture never changed? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, and, and let's let's talk about culture. How is culture um, evolved? Culture is a consequence of the actions and behaviors of leadership. So if management loses interest, then probably the culture is not right within the organization um, because management is not focused on the right things and I don't believe the people who are doing 5S um, will let it go if management actually appears interested every single day. If they're being measured every day, if they're being followed up, if they're being rewarded with having a great clean environment, then that is a culture that is being generated by management. If the process or the program fails, uh, management's lost interest and they're not driving the right culture with the actions and behaviors. So hopefully that answered the question. Great. Uh, our next question is, if 5S includes simplifying, why do some companies complicate the 5S process by adding a 6 as safety. It's interesting, and this is this is all about uh, preference. Um, a lot of companies want to be different. They they don't want to be in the same mold as um, everyone else. Uh, you'll find that um, the Toyota production system, for instance, is something that people um, revere, and they try and follow the best they can. And then, you know, you might have the Bombardier production system or uh, something different, the Surecore production system. Um, they're trying to uh, take their company image and apply it 
to that particular thing. 5S is very, very, very simple. And um, people then say, well, we want to bring in the 6S, which is safety. Those organizations um, don't realize that if you, if you implement 5S, uh, very, very good, safety is going to be the first thing that you will benefit from. And unfortunately, uh, the questioner was right. It does complicate it. I know of a company that went to 7S. And in fact, they've now realized that 7S is confusing and they've actually reverted back to 5S. So I think you'll find that companies that, that do go 6S, they realize after a certain time that safety is actually going to come uh, with 5S and they, they will revert back to 5S program. Uh, I personally don't support 6S or 7S because safety is paramount anyway and it's going to come with a great 5S program. Okay, great. Uh, that's uh, it for questions and this does bring our webinar to a close and our third scheduled webinar in this series will be on Thursday, December 1st, titled Let the Customer Pull, again with Richard Evans. And please don't forget to fill out the short survey that will be in your inbox. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and have a productive day. Thank you all.